So in yesterday's lesson, we went ahead and we learned about C-sharp events. So now we're gonna go ahead and take that knowledge and apply it to our game and start creating an event system inside of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by creating my event manager. Which will just be an empty. Now later on, I don't want you to get this confused when we get into the UI stuff. As when we add UI stuff, we're also gonna get an event system. That's part of the UI stuff. So if you need to change this name to something else, that's fine. The name of the game object really doesn't matter. What does matter is the name of the script. Well, I guess technically you could name it something else, but that just means it won't be the name the same as mine and you'll probably end up with the typo if you're following along. So we'll go ahead, clear all this out. And let's start thinking where we wanna put some events. Now as a general rule, any game object that's part of a hierarchy, like we have the player ship and then all the parts underneath, I generally do direct binding to these. So I'll actually go ahead and drag and drop the parts that I wanna to communicate to. But when I get the game objects that aren't parented, when I want those to talk to each other, for instance, we have the asteroid manager and the spawn points, those are all separate game objects. And when the game starts, that's when I want them to actually start doing stuff. So let's go ahead and set that event up right now. So we're gonna have a, like a start game event. So let's go ahead, we'll jump back into our script. And we'll make our delegate. Public, delegate. Now to start our game, we don't need to send any parameters. We don't need any special return types. While we're using events, we're not gonna get into return types anyway, so the return type is always gonna be void for us. And I'm just gonna say start game. Now keep in mind, multiple events can use the same delegate, because remember this delegate is nothing more than just the definition of the signature that we want. And I'm actually gonna put a delegate on the end, just to be a little more clear on what exactly that is. So now I want a public static, Start game delegate. Now, as far as the public and the static goes, you can have static public if you want. Generally, I like to have the, the accessor first before any statics. And I'm just gonna say on start game, we will need a public static method for it, which I will call start game. And I forgot the return type. Then in here we have our if block and we say if on start game does not equal null. So as long as we have a one subscriber, then we're gonna call on start game. We'll go ahead, we'll save that off, jump back into Unity. All right, no errors. So we've got the event set up that we can call it. The next thing I wanna do is create some sort of button or something on the screen so that when we click it, it starts. Now, of course, we could do this through the Unity event system, but this is about C-sharp events. So let's go ahead and we'll do that. So I'm gonna create a button, and it's right in the middle of the screen. That's fine. Uh, there's not a whole lot I'm gonna do here. I'm not worried about the UI just yet. Only thing I'm worried about is the text. I just wanna switch this to play. And let's create a button script as well. Now, I don't think I'm gonna have a whole lot of UI elements here. So I'm just gonna make one script for all of them. So I'm gonna call it game UI. I'm gonna open this up. And this time around, we're gonna make an event for the button, but we're gonna use Unity's event system. So it's gonna be public. I'm not gonna return anything. And I'm gonna say play game is the name of my method. And then inside of here, I'm gonna say event manager dot Start game, the method. I'm gonna save that off, I'm gonna come back in. Uh, normally I will go, well, I guess I should have done it first. I'll do it now. Usually I have a panel in here so that my game UI is in a panel. I just like having that extra layer to be able to toggle all my UI elements on and off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put in a panel. I'll put the button under the panel. I'm gonna change the panel name to Game UI. And this is where I'm gonna attach that script. 
And like we're saying, I'll eventually have the score and any other UI elements we need up here. But the great thing is when we don't want to look at any of that, we can turn them all off at the same time, but just by toggling the panel. Uh, but we do have the panel. I do want to change the color. I'm actually just going to toggle off the image. I don't want that gray film. You could go ahead and change the color of, uh, of it. But for the game UI, I don't want a panel or an image. All right, so we'll go ahead. We're going to select our button. We're going to scroll down to the bottom here, and we're going to look for the on-click events here. We're going to add plus, and it's going to ask for a game object. So we're looking for a game object that has a script for the button. And in previous videos, I've told you that I usually like to have smaller scripts, uh, for instance, the display button, and we just go ahead and just attach it to it. And that's if I have a lot of different UI elements. This here, the only interactable UI element I think I'm going to have is display button. So because of that, I'm going to keep them all in the same script. So we go ahead, we assign it. Now we list of all the different functions. So here are all the classes that are associated with it. Now the one we want is the one we wrote where we called it game UI. And here's all the methods that we have access to. And the one I want is play game. That's it. So we'll go ahead, we'll save. And I'm just going to quickly throw out a debug message. I'm going to come back into the event manager. And in here to say debug.log. Start the game. Welcome back into Unity, start it up. And when we hit play, we hit the start the game method. So we know it works. Let's go ahead and start incorporating that into our game. So the first one I wanna work with is the enemy spawner. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this from start. We're gonna have the on enable and on disable. And we'll just say enemy, oh, it's not enemy. <laughs> Event manager dot start game or the on start game. And remember when we want to add a subscriber, remember add the subscriber, so plus equals, then the method we want to actually add. And in this case, it's going to be start spawning. And we do not need the parentheses because the parameters are already set on what we're going to be passing in from the event manager up here from the delegate. Uh, so we'll jump back into the enemy spawner. Uh, I'm going to get rid of it in start now. And remember, if you create an on enable and you're adding a listener, let's make sure we add that on disable. And we want to remove it. And I just want to quickly look at start spawning. Yep. So we start off, it's just going to invoke. And on disable, I also want to call stop spawning just so we cancel the invoke before we turn off the, the listener. So I'm gonna save that off. And we jump back into our game. We're gonna go ahead and let it recompile. There should be no noticeable difference when we start the game up, except for the fact that now we don't have it bound. Everything is gonna be spawned in when we hit the play button. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and zoom in on one of these. And when we hit play, uh, that's one thing we should do is get rid of the the play button too. We'll do that next. There we go. They spawn in. So let's make this play button hide next. So that's in the game UI script. So I'm going to come right up to the top. I generally just like my Unity functions at the top. I'm going to paste the other one in. And I need a method to call here. And I'm going to call it void hide panel. Now this is one where we could actually go ahead and pass a Boolean value in on whether or not to, to hide those game elements for us. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and just use the one. And we'll go ahead, paste the on disable in. And we remove. Uh, the way this is gonna work is instead of just passing in, because I, I wanna keep using the same event instead of making a separate event, but instead of passing in a Boolean value here to toggle the panels on and off, I'm just gonna keep track of that in uh, the class itself. So bool, and I'm just gonna call it is hidden. And I'm gonna start it off equaling false. And then every time we call this, I'm just gonna do a quick check. So we'll say if is hidden, then I'm gonna go ahead and hide all my UI elements. Else, show them all. Now, as far as actually hiding them goes, we could also do that down here in the play game method, since that's when we hit it, we fire off the event. We could go ahead and hide the button itself. 
For now, that's all I have is the button. So that's what I'm gonna hide for now. So I'll come up here and I need to make a reference for it. And if we come down here and click on the button, uh, I just wanna actually go ahead and just toggle the whole thing off, so set active. So in order to use the UI stuff, we have to actually go ahead and add one more namespace, which is UI. Then we can say, serialize field. And we actually don't need to save it as a button since all we're gonna do is toggle it on and off. Technically, we don't really need to grab the UI namespace. We could have just called it a game object. But let's just go ahead, stretch our legs and go ahead and grab the button itself. All right, so if we are hidden, go ahead and take that play button, dot set active. Oh, we're gonna have to grab its game object anyway. We are actually gonna have to grab its, so let's go ahead and Let's just keep it a game object. And we'll get rid of that namespace. Just so we don't have to go ahead and get that. And we can just do it here. It's just a little extra typing, it really doesn't matter. Then we can take the exact same thing, go ahead, paste it in here. Except this time set it to true. We need a toggle for it. So we come up here and say is hidden is equal to not is hidden. And the way this works is we're gonna take the is hidden value and make it equal to whatever it is not. So if it is equal to true, it's gonna be equal to false now. If it is equal to false, it's gonna be equal to true now. So it just flips whatever the value actually is. Now, I purposely went ahead and done the code the way it is like this. And it should work, we'll go test it out. But I want you to pause the video and take a look at this and figure out how you can actually condense this down. There's quite a bit of extra typing here that we don't really need, but I wanted to put it out this way because for people just getting into it, sometimes it's a little more easier to digest if you actually see it written out in long form. But let's just go ahead, we'll test it out, make sure I have no errors, and to make sure it works. And I forgot to assign the button. So we'll go ahead, assign the button, start it back up. And when I hit play, the play button disappears. All right, so you've had some time to think about it. And if we take a look here, all we're doing is passing in a true or false value. Now we're calling this is hidden. And technically we could just pass it in here, right? If it is is hidden, we could pass in the false value or pass in the true value. Or better yet, it'd probably be better if we just change the name of it to something that has a positive value being true. So you can have is shown or show me. And I'm gonna call it is displayed. And now we're gonna start it off as equaling true. I'm gonna come down here. And instead of having this whole if block now, we can just toggle and then just go ahead, put that in there and just say is displayed. And all this other stuff, we can just comment out. And you can even get shorter with putting that in there, but I'm not gonna bother mixing commands. Let's keep one command per line. If we come back in, hit play. Same thing happens. There we go. Great, so the last thing I wanna do is go ahead and set up the asteroid manager and not have it spawn its asteroids until we've actually clicked the button. So I'm going to the scripts, grab the asteroid manager, and pretty much the same thing. We need a start and a stop, or on enable and on disable. So I'm gonna go ahead, come into any of them, and I'll just make sure, yep, I do have them. I'll just copy both, go into Asteroid Manager, and I'm gonna come under Start, and then just call Place Asteroids. We can comment out this. And now if we come back in, let it recompile, when we hit play, we have no asteroids, we have no enemies. Our ship is still technically going, but we don't have a game master yet where we, I want the game master to spawn my player when I hit start. But right now, nothing happens until we hit play. And then we go ahead, we get our asteroids, our enemy spawners get turned on so they can start spawning stuff. And it's all decoupled, look at that. Way too many, we should also put limits on it. But anyway, there we go, we've gone ahead and implemented our first event into our game. 
And it was actually quite painless, wasn't it? Anyway, let me know down below in the comments what you thought of it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.